Hi, my name's Anne Marie, and on my seasonal cake flicks, I'll be showing you how to make beautiful, lifelike sugar flowers. Whether you're a beginner or more advanced, I'll be showing you lots of hints, tips, and techniques to help you achieve amazing results with your own flowers. So please join me on Cake Flicks to learn to make petals in sugar. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Um, welcome back to my third episode of Petals and Sugar on Cake Flicks. If you've missed the first two, you can always go back and have another look and hopefully you'll enjoy them. My name's Anne-Marie McNamara of Ivory Tower Cakes in Edinburgh in Scotland. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful Lavaterra flowers. So this is also called the Tree Mallow and they come in different sizes so we have some large ones in the centre here and some smaller ones here so I'm going to be doing the large ones for you the small ones are almost exactly the same um, apart from they're slightly closer together with the flowers so let's get started I have some veiners here so this is the poppy veiner that I, was, that I showed you last week which I didn't use for the poppies because it wasn't big enough but this is actually ideal for this flower so if you haven't got this, we can use a dressing tool and a, a skewer and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is by Diamond Paste, this one. And I've also got a, this is an Aldeval veiner and it's a Hypericum veiner and this is for the leaves. And we're also going to need some calyx cutters. So I've got various different ones here to show you don't need to have any specific brand. I've also got a corn husk veiner here just on the calyxes and it's very minimal veining so you can omit that if you don't want to use it and I have here some templates and you will be able to find the templates on um, either Cakeflix or on my website which is www.ivytowercakes.com What I'm using today will be ball tools, a couple of different sizes, my field tool, a craft knife, my tweezers, skewer and my dressing tool. We also have some glue. The colours I've used for the paste are gooseberry and yellow and pink. I'm using some thread as well because I'm going to show you how to do the centre pistol. We're also using some green florist tape. So I've got a full width one and I've actually cut it in half. Either you can use scissors or you can use a tape cutter. The first part we're going to make of the flower today is the pistol. So this is when the pistol is freshly opened. It has a nice bulbous part here with all these little pollen pieces on the top here and this is as the flower is getting a little bit older it has these little stamens coming out of the end there so we're going to do this one and you'll be able to just replicate this one in a similar way to replicate the pistol with the thread we're going to take a length of thread and we're just going to wrap it around two fingers about seven or eight times then we're going to take this loop and a 24 gauge wire. Now the wires I'm using are sunrise wires and I'm also taking some florist tape. So what I'm doing is I'm laying the wire against the thread like this and I'm going to attach it. So pull your tape and release the glue, warm it up and then wrap it round and make sure that it's secured like this. Then take your wire and bend it over the tape so it's nice and folded over and then tape over the wire and the, the rest of the thread. There we go. Then we need some scissors and we're just going to cut these threads and that will give us our little threads at the top. So we can trim these once we've got the paste on. So I'm going to take a small piece of the ultra fine modeling flower paste, which is the one that I'm using. So make sure it's really, really nice and worked and nice and warmed up so that it, re it releases the gum and we'll pop that onto our wire here. So push it up. We don't need it uh, needed to really put very much glue onto here because this is nice and sticky. So what I'm wanting to make is this bulbous part of the, of the top here 
and then have it slightly thinner as it goes down. So you would do the same for the full one but just make it a bit fuller here and obviously it hasn't got the threads in. Pinch that on, make sure it's really nice and tight on there. And bring your paste down so it's thinned out. I'm just going to pinch a little bit of paste off at the bottom because it's a bit long. And I've got two centimetres here approximately. And then I'm just going to thin out underneath the bulbous part so it's really nice and fine there goes in a little bit, like a little waste underneath. This is some ground rice. Now you can use polenta, you can use gelatine, you can use semolina. And I'm going to colour up my stamen first. So I've got my little box here with my colours and I've got some plum, sugar flavoured plum here and some white. And all I'm going to do is take a little bit of plum, a little bit of white and I'm going to dust up that centre part. Then I'm going to pop some glue over the bulbous part. And I'm going to dip it into my rice. And there we have our little steaming. This is the first stage of the bud. And this is the second stage when we've added the extra calyx on the back. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do the bud like this and then add these three calyx parts on the bottom or you can do it all in one. Taking a small piece of green paste, rolled it into a ball and no cracks and I've, I have a 26 wire here. Uh, you can go down as far as a 30 depending on the size of your buds so they go from very very small to quite large like this. So roll it into a ball then into what we want is a slight peak on it. It's more like a sphere with a point on it is what we're looking for, something like that. I'm heating my wire up and I'll insert it into my paste and it will seal straight onto the sugar. It just lets me work with it a little bit quicker than I would normally be able to work with it. I'm taking my tweezers, I'm going to just pinch five little rows along the actual bud, evenly spaced out as much as you can. I'm not taking loads of paste but I'm taking enough that it creates that ridged kind of lip there. It's not big fat amounts. It's a nice little bit of paste. And then I have my five and then what to do is just pinch it up at the tip like so to bring it more to a point. So if you want to do it all in one what I've done is I've taken another ball of paste and made it into a slightly more cone shape there um, because what we're going to do then is we're going to create this these outer three calyx parts so just cut in. Now we don't want to cut in really deep. We want to try and keep it flat against the paste. So we're just cutting off a little bit like that. Okay. So again, round and again, round. Open that up. Pinch this centre bit so it's nice and smooth. And then we can take our, our little tweezers and create those five little lip sections all the way around and then with these parts I'm going to take my Dresden tool and I'm going to pop a little bit of cornflour over my finger, lay it against there and just open that out. So widen that out, each part you can also use um, the end of a cell pin if you want to, if you find that easier. And then what to do is pinch down the edge of each of these little calyxes here, make it nice and fine at the edges. Take our Dresden tool and just mark down the centre, just a little line down the centre there and then pinch that at the tip, pinch it back, give it a little bit of shape, pinch so it's not, they're not all the same, pinch a bit of movement, then take some glue, pop it inside here, 
bob base of those and then stick them up. And once we put that all together, we've got that nice bud shape. That gives us the same shape. I'm going to show you how to attach the calyx if you don't want to do it in the all-in-one method. So this is the shape of the calyx that we're looking for here. So this, this is the template, so you'll be able to download them on my website www.ivyturcakes.com But we're going to be using a calyx cutter to do it because it just makes it a bit easier. So I'm going to roll out some paste. Make sure it's nice and clean on the back. Rub your finger over to make sure it's nice and clean. Pop out your shape and pop it under some perspex or some plastic or into food bag, something to stop it from drying out. So I've cut out some calyxes. What I'm going to do is take one that's slightly thicker and I'm going to cut out three pieces and I'm going to pop them onto my sponge pad and then I'm going to take my ball tool, the wide end of my ball tool and just stretch it from side to side like that to really widen that out. Okay. And then this little point at the top, I'm going to just take that off because I don't want such a defined tip on there. Just trim it away a little bit so it's giving me a little bit of a point. All three of those on, corn husk veiner, down you go. And it just gives a little bit of definition on the, the actual calyx. So then I'm going to take my Dresden tool and just mark down inside of them. Pop a little bit of glue on the bottom of these calyxes and pop them onto our bud. Try and keep them nice and even. So let's go round. You've got this outer set. Pinch the edges. Give it a little bit of shape. So that's the two ways that you can do your bud. We're going to take a break and I'll see you back here in a minute. Welcome back and the next part we're going to be doing is the petals on the flower and then we're going to pop on the calyxes and um, I'm going to show you how to put it together. So now we're going to make the bud. This is the bud here. So I'm taking a small piece of paste which I have coloured up with some Pro Gel pink. This time we do want a cone shape. I've got a 20 um, four gauge wire here which I'm again I'm going to heat up and insert into the bud give it a little twist I'm going to take my um, small end of my wheel tool you can also use a craft knife for this I'm just going to start I'm going to curve it round I'm just coming around behind each one I want to put five lines in here if I can bring it back up to the top curve round again, five lines all the way around. Then once I've got those five lines I'm just going to give it a gentle twist. So now we're going to attach the first part of the calyx. So we're going to soften the edges of our little calyx here on each section. So half on and half off the paste. Make sure it's nice and fine at the edges. And then we can just pinch these tips together before we pop them on, it'll be easier. A little bit of glue into the centre and up the calyx sections, almost to the top. Pop your wire into the centre, bring your calyx up and round and just attach each of the little calyxes round the bud. Pinch it at the bottom. Make sure it's nice and neat. So we're going to do the outer part of the calyx exactly the same way as we did for the bud. So I'm using the Ultra Fine Modelling Paste by Simply Heaven and I'm 
just going to make sure it's nice and conditioned here, nice and stretchy and pliable. So I'm using this long groove board, but you can use any method. You could use the twiddle and stick method if you want, or the fold over method, or whatever other method you want to use to create that ridge in your paste for your wire to go into. I'm going to roll out this groove at the end because I don't want that on my petal. Making sure that's nice and fine. Pop that over the top of my paste and take my craft knife and cut round. I'm going to take one of my 28 gauge wires and try and keep your wires as straight as you can. Find the side that's got the little point on it. So I'm just padding my fingers over there, push towards the centre so that the, you're not pressing directly over the wire. And there we have our first petal. I'm going to pop it on my pad, gently soften the edges. So I don't want it too frilly, but I do want a little bit of movement in it. They're pretty flat, these petals, there's not a great bit of movement, there's more movement slightly in the edges of them. So I'm just going to put a bit more movement around the edge and then we gently cut in towards the centre. Just like so. So you can you can dry that on a piece of tin foil or you can actually dry it on a foam pad. So if you're drying it on a piece of tin foil, just pop it onto the foil and just angle it slightly inwards. Now, as they go round, they slightly overlap, so just make sure that you've not got them too much like a U-shape because then you won't be able to fit them round the same. So it's just a very, very, very slight curve and they're more slightly curved towards the bottom, but the top part is not as curved. So with this petal, I'm going to use the Dresden tool and the skewer to create the indentations in the petal. And then I'm going to take my skewer, put it back onto the board and take my skewer and just roll it little bits at a time over the petal to give it those nice indentations. Flip it over, do the same on the back. And I'm going in a sort of fan shaped pattern. I'm then going to take my Dresden tool and I'm going to indent down the back first, some lines, and then I'm going to go in and just put a little line so that each of those lines looks like a little V at the top, just randomly up and down different heights. And I'm going to do the same when I turn it over, so a little V, little V, little V. some nice indentations in there. So that's how we would make our petals. So I like to dry all of my petals before I dust them up just because I've got a habit of loose, loosening them off the wire at the end and I don't like that. For this lavatera I'm going to be using sugar flare plum and some white and I'm going to mix it so it's a very pale pink colour to start with and I'm going to go all over the petal and I'm going to take the darker colour and I'm going to go into the V on the petal here and I'm going to take some pink down one side, the base, pink down the other and then blend it up towards the outside edge, a little bit more in the middle to give me that V shape at the bottom of the petal as with the other ones. Load up the brush with the plum colour, wiping off the excess and use um, the side of the brush to sweep across the front and the back of the petals to pick out all of those lovely veins that were created. So we have our five petals coloured and I'm going to just dust up the stamens in the middle but first of all I'm going to trim them down because they're far too long 
and then I'm just going to take some pink dust and really make them really stand out with some really really plum stamens sticking out. You can add a bit more colour on there if you want to. So pop your stamen up against your base of your petal, so the two bases next to each other and then pop your tape round, twist it on and make sure it's attached. I'm just going to come down a little bit and then go back up. So pop these all in. Now, when I said to you before that they're going to slightly overlap, that's exactly it. Now depending how close you want, the more overlap they will be, the more open they actually just sit next to each other if it's a really open flower. Done the calyx the same as I've done for the half open bud. Pop that onto your flower. So when you pop the calyx onto the back of the flower, you want to make sure that each of these individual pieces of the calyx sit in between each of the petals. So the space, the gap there, so that when you look at it from the other side, you can see the green. On the smaller Lavatera, the shape of the leaves are elongated and on the larger flower they're a bit more shaped. And I've not rolled this as thin as I have the petal because leaves tend to be a bit more fleshier than petals. So make several sizes of leaves and then take a small ball tool and you're going to use uh, the small end just to push out from off the paste outwards to create a jaggy edge all the way around the leaves and this will uh, give the illusion of a serrated edge and then we're going to take um, a, a larger ball tool around the edges just to soften that edge and give it the illusion of a nice fine um, leaf. Once we've wired our leaf what we're going to do is take our Dresden tool around the edges of our leaf and you want to start off the leaf on the pad and then come onto the paste and this will encourage the edges to go back. It also stops you from um, creating dents into the edge of your petal if you start on the paste. So always start off the on the foam and onto the leaf and then just give it a little bit of movement and uh, encourage those edges back on the leaf. The last thing to show you before I show you how to dust up the leaves and the flowers are these tiny little bracts at the bottom of the leaves and uh, also on the flowers. So I'm going to show you how to make the small leaves. So we take a small sausage of paste and twiddle it onto our wire, up and down the wire until it's nice and thin and elongated, shaping it just to a slight point. Make sure it's securely attached. Take a piece of Perspex or plastic and flatten out your paste. Then pop it onto your foam and take your very small ball tool and just uh, serrate those edges as we did with the bigger leaves. Then take your Dresden tool and just mark down a vein down the centre of the, the leaf. We're also going to take the small ball tool on the back of the leaf just round the edge to soften that and encourage that edge just to turn back a little bit. Do the same for the tiny leaves but leave the edges unserrated. We're going to take a break and I'll see you back here in a minute. Hi everyone, my name is Anne-Marie McNamara of Ivory Tower Cakes based in Edinburgh and Bonnie, Scotland. I'm a cake designer and sugar artist and my specialities are modelling and sugar flowers. I love demonstrating and teaching classes and workshops all over the world suitable for beginners to professionals, seeing the joy that creating brings, inspiring and helping to build confidence and skills. If you would like to learn more, please visit my website ivorytowercakes.com or check out what I'm up to on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest at Ivory Tower Cakes. You can also join me online in my live classes or purchase my online video tutorials 
which will be available soon. Thank you for this opportunity, Cakeflakes. Hi, welcome back. And if you've just joined me, my name is Anne-Marie McNamara from Ivory Tower Cakes in Edinburgh in Scotland. And on this episode of um, my Petals and Sugar, I'm putting together and making a lavatera. So this is what we're doing. So we're now at the exciting part, which is the colouring up and that's when everything comes to life and this is a bit I love. I'm going to be using some spring green and some lemon and some moss green and uh, some white. Also some leaf green, which is, if you don't have leaf green, it's, it's quite like a vine green. But if even if you don't have that, you can mix your yellow and you'll get the same sort of tones. And then the autumn green as well, which I'm going to use on the main part of the leaf. First of all, I'm going to colour the bud of the flower. For that, I'm going to be using the plum that I used before. So I'm taking a little bit of the pink and taking that over the main part of the, the bud. What I'm doing is I'm going in with some colour here and I'm taking some plum to highlight a bit more because the, the closed buds will be a deeper colour than the petals. The actual buds and the back of the calyxes, they are a pale green. So I'm going to take a little bit of moss, a little bit of spring. As you can see, I'm dusting inside a box here because I don't like my colours to go everywhere. A little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to create a nice light green colour. So get that green on into the base of here. Bring it up to the tips. Now don't get too much dust on your bud. We don't want dust everywhere and we want to try and keep it off the pink. So try and just concentrate and get it onto the actual calyx itself. Once I've got the, the medium kind of light colour on there, I'm going to take a little bit of the darker green and I'm just going to take a little bit over, over the base and sweeping it up to give a little bit of a contrast onto the calyx there and the same at the base of the calyx inside with a bit of that darker green. So just take any excess dust off, a little bit of yellow on the tips, on some, and sweep it down, blend it in. so that it just gives that a little bit of contrast. Now the flower has got really, really kind of light green when you look at it from the from inside the flower. And that's because the light's shining through, so it looks really pale. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna make sure that this is a lovely pale color. Take that in behind if you can. These are soft, so this is why I would probably do it before it dries. It's a good idea if you can put this on, the colour on, before you actually attach the calyx and it saves you all that hassle of trying to go in. You see behind there, you can see in between that nice bright green colour and that's what we want right in here. So we've got one more petal in here to do. Get that right in to the base of the petal there, right to the tip. And you can see that nice, lovely green colour shining through there with the petals. And we're going to do the same on the back. So now I'm going to take a slightly darker colour coming to the outside of the petals here on the calyx. And again, even darker at the base. Sweep a little bit of dark over, just randomly, up the back of the calyx, just like that. Okay, and then we're going to, again, I'm going to take some vine green this time and with a little bit of yellow, so it's not quite as kind of obviously yellow. I'm just in at the tip.
what we're doing is with the leaves we're taking the vine green or leaf green down the centre of the leaf like that just on the front of the leaf and it will go into that central vein and into the little veins at the side so right up the middle and then try and take it out into some of these other veins here at the side just to give a contrast when we put the darker colour on and what we're using for this is we're going to use autumn green on the front and then we're going to put a bit of white into the autumn green for the back because the back of the leaves are lighter into the centre Doing the same with this, these small ones, the same thing, just get them all covered all over in the autumn green. Then I'm going to take some white and autumn green on the back. much paler than the front. So that's the back and then there's the front. So you see the difference in colour. So there's quite a contrast. I'm just going to pop a wee bit more darker colour onto here. Now the only other thing we have to do with those is to go along across the edges with a little bit of burgundy and I'm just going to leave this in the lid because we don't need very much at all. So all I'm going to do is take a flat brush and I'm going to get my burgundy into there and just brush off any excess and then I'm going to go over the edges of my calyx and just a tiny bit on the tip of my calyx with a tiny bit of burgundy on there. It's not solid, solid colour on there, so I'm just lightly, lightly touching. And I'm doing the same on the back of the, the flower calyx, just at the tips, a little bit, onto each of the little tips of the, the calyxes on there. And that'll do for that one. And then I'm gonna do the same on the flower bud as well. So again, just catching a little bit here and there on that bud. So we'll put all them together and then they'll all be ready to attach to the main stem. So we'll start with the flower. So I'm going to just tape down the stem of the flower pulling on the tape, releasing the glue. Now this has already got tape on it, but I'm going to do it again because it's quite a thick um, stem here. It's not a skinny little stem here. And then I'm going to come back in with my um, two leaves and I'm going to attach some tape onto the bigger, longer leaf because that one actually doesn't attach to the stem of the flower right at the end of the leaf it actually attaches slightly further down so that it droops like this. So when you want to put it on, you need to think about it drooping and it usually comes a little bit below the actual flower itself. So we would have it drooping like so. So we'll attach it there. So pull in our tape. So I'm using half width tape here. I'm doing a turn and then I'm going to pop this tiny little one in and I'm not going to put any tape on that one because it's that is in right in at the base there. So we have our two little things, leafy bits there, and you can pull that down so that we don't see any of the wire at all. Tape that. 
So that literally gets attached into, into the main stem like that. So for the bud, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go actually up and down the bud a couple of times with some tape. So I'm attaching it down, turn it, bring it back up. And then I'm going to go back down approximately half an inch. So you see my, my stems thickened up. And then when I get down half an inch, I'm actually going to stop. And I'm going to cut my tape like this. And I'm going to twist it, twist it around again. So that I have this little piece sticking off the side. And then I'm going to take my scissors, I'm going to cut up like as if you were cutting the ends of a ribbon to make a little two little pointy bits like a snake's tongue like that and then I'm just going to twist them and that's our two little leaf bits at the bottom of our bud so the half open bud for the flower is the same and then with the leaf we actually do the same and there is our leaves ready to go in. So that's us completed all the parts that we need to then pop all of this into our stem. So when we come back after the break we'll be putting all of this together to create our beautiful stem of Lavaterra. See you when we come back. So now we're coming on to the part where we're going to complete this stem of Lavaterra. So we've got all these little buds at the top, various sizes, and we're going to come down and attach the bigger buds and then the half open buds here. And then we'll pop in the flowers and then the leaves as they go down. Now, the way that they go is they go from side to side. So for the buds on the top, you have a cluster here and then they go one, one side, one the other and they kind of go like that all the way down the stem. The same with the flowers, you can see at the back, one towards one side, one towards the other, and the same with the leaves. So I have already started and filled in some buds at the top. So I've got seven buds here in this little cluster at the top here. And you'll see I've attached all these little fronds of leaves at the base like I did with the bud here. Once you've got that cluster at the top, they then start to spread out as it goes further down the branch. So you've got a bit more space in between the buds. So I'm going to start by inserting the next bud into here, just a little bit down on the other side. Now, when I'm working, putting my flowers together, I often do it on top of a piece of sponge. So this is just my dimpled foam. And it's just if I drop it, it's not going to hit the worktop and break. Because believe you me, I've done that lots of times before. And it's not a very nice feeling when you've spent so much time on this and then all of a sudden you drop it and that's it. I'm going to start by popping my next bud in and I'm taking some half width pale green tape. So we leave a little bit of a gap here because the the leaves are just slightly above where it joins in but not not too far above. So just take it in 
and get that taped in nice and tight. So again, bring this in just to just below where you've got your little fronds and get that attached in. Again, if you want to make it nice and neat, take it back round in between and just pull it gently and that just neatens that off where it joins the stem. We've got one, one open, half open bud in and I'm going to pop the next one in here as well. So once I've got my buds in where I want them, then I can then start inserting my flowers. I'm going to go and change to a different tape now, it's just slightly darker. So stretch it out for the glue and then we're going to start inserting our flowers. Now the flowers are smaller usually at the bottom as they're starting to close up and this is why they get these little um, pistol bits sticking out at the end there. That is an older flower. So we're going to start with the most open flowers at the top. We're going at this side because we have that bud at that side so we want this one at this side. So there's a, a space of about maybe half an inch between where it connects to the, the actual main stem and before the leaves that join at the bottom of the flower as well. I've initially attached it to a 22 gauge wire, all of these small buds at the top. And as we go down, I'm going to actually put in a stronger wire. This one I've got is an 18. So I'm going to pop that in right beside the flower there that will strengthen up the stem. So just be careful because you're working with a long wire and it can get in the way, can get caught in your clothes and then next thing you've got it jammed and it bangs your flowers and then they're broken. So that's actually quite firm now. So I'm taping the second flower in. It's really awkward with this long wire, unfortunately. So that's what to be careful with when you've got these flowers that are on long stems. Okay, whoops. So we have our two flowers in. We're gonna go in here with our third flower. Just make sure that you have got it so that it sits slightly back from the other ones and not too far down but just enough so we've got some gap in there and we can tilt it forward a little bit so take your time make sure it's in the right position Now have our three flowers in. We're going to pop, start popping the leaves in one at a time. So we start with the smaller ones, and we want to attach them where the two small leaves join. So where these two small leaves join is where we're going to attach them to the stem. So again, look at where your last flower is and attach it on the opposite side. So these ones can kind of go round in threes, round about. So they don't have to be completely opposite. Um, you can have an extra one slightly around the back and the way that these go is the, the droop. Pop your tape on right at the base of those two leaves there and get that attached to your stem. Remember as you're swinging round to watch out for any of the above leaves or petals. I'm going with the next one. I'm going to bring this slightly behind in here so it's actually not at the side it's just behind and then I'll bring the other one at the side and the other one at the other side. So when you look at it like that, you can see one there and this one slightly behind here. Look 
how pretty that is. It is so worth the effort, I think. It's a lot of work, but it's really, really worth it. So we're going to go in with the slightly bigger one now and bring it into the left side of the stem here and then get that taped in. And finally, I'm going to put the last one in, but you can keep going. You can have this stem as long as you want because they're very long stems. These, these um, are six to eight feet high, these actually. So if you want to keep going with leaves, feel free. Um, do as many as you want. So now that we've got it all taped together, I'm just going to blend in with some of my green in at the base where the um, individual leaf stems and buds all kind of attach to the main stem. So I'm just going to blend in the colours there so it come down, they're lighter at the top. So as I come down from the top, I'll just blend that in. And as I come further down, the stem's actually getting darker and a bit more woody-like. So it kind of goes to a slightly darker green and then as you come further, further down, you'd add a little touch of brown in. So these leaves, when you're positioning them, they droop over as if they're hanging like a bunch of grapes, sort of like that, just droopy droopy. Try and give them a, a natural kind of curve. What I'm going to do is dust over with some cornflower and some pearl white dust which is by Sugar Flare and that will give the illusion of kind of a shimmery look to it like little hairs. So I'm going to steam it first and then I'm going to, while it's still slightly damp, I'm just going to brush over all of it with some of the mixture of the cornflower and the pearl white. So I'm just going to steam it. Now I'm holding the steamer probably about 10 to 12 inches away. I don't want this to get really soft and soggy. I just want the colours to be sealed in and give it a nice slight glaze on there. So I'm going to start just dabbing on a little bit of the white and cornflower onto the buds and all the way down the stem. So this is our gorgeous finished stem. You can see the sheen on the leaves there. I hope that you've really enjoyed this. I know it's been a bit of an intricate one, this one, but I think it's definitely worth the effort. As I say, my daughter absolutely loves this. She's, she wants to pinch this one for her room. So if you've enjoyed it, please like and share. And do go back and look at my other episodes of Petals and Sugar. And uh, thank you so much for David and Paul for giving me the opportunity to come on here and show you some of these beautiful flowers. And I hope that you'll join me for my next episode, which will be in two weeks' time, same time. And I'll be showing you another beautiful flower. Again, you'll just need to wait and see what it is. So um, be a nice surprise. And I hope that some of you will have a go at doing this. Templates, you can download them at www.ivytowercakes.com. And again, thank you for watching me. Bye.